Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you who are joining me here on the East Coast. I want to say good morning to those of you who may be joining us from the central time zones, the mountain time zones, or the Pacific time zones here in the U.S. I also want to say good evening if any of you are joining us from across the pond in parts of U.K. or parts of Europe. And, of course, good early morning if any of you are joining us from parts of Asia or Australia. Welcome to today's presentation. Today we're going to discuss using the search tool, the tips and discussion on using the Power Options search tool for different strategies, how you're going to be able to customize your searches, tips of course on how some of the criteria interact with each other, and what you may be looking for uh, based on your strategy and uh, what your goals are as well. Before we begin, just want to give a brief overview of what is Power Options. Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Ernie Zarenner created the Power Options tools about 17 years ago, back in 1997. Now, our patented search tool, which we're going to focus on today, will allow you to search across the universe of options and over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies based on your criteria. We do have several search criteria and several default searches set up for you as well uh, to help you um, get started. Of course, you can use those searches as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. Once you've identified those positions, you can quickly compare the risk versus reward of the stock and the option criteria. And then, of course, we offer tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage your positions. Now, in addition to that, we do offer countless educational articles and help pages on using the various tools and the various option strategies, management techniques, adjustments, and so forth. And as I've mentioned, everyone here uh, uses these tools to trade their personal accounts. We have been in business for 17 years, but everyone here uses the Power Options tools to trade their personal accounts, so we have many more um, years of combined trading experience. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Chepka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. Uh, I've had the great pleasure of working with Ernie Zarenner and the Power Options staff for the past 12 years. I do handle a lot of the coaching sessions and education on Power Options, obviously the various archived and live webinars as well. Um, I am versed in all strategies on the site. I am an active options trader as well. I use these tools to trade my personal account. Um, also, I just always want to be upfront and say there are certain strategies I have never traded in my personal account. Uh, things such as uh, naked calls, you know, selling a call option without owning the stock or uh, owning a uh, other call to protect against it. Uh, iron butterfly positions or any form of butterfly that have sort of that tense profit and loss chart, that peak profit and loss chart. Um, and in addition to that, I've never done short straddles or short strangles. I prefer to use iron condors as opposed to the short straddles or short strangles, so I know that I have a risk to find on those positions as well. But if you do have questions about those other strategies today, we'll be more than happy uh, to help you out as well. All right, what we're going to cover today, of course, is customizing the search tool for various strategies. Uh, we're going to take a look at evaluating the stock and option criteria in different strategies. Uh, we're also going to talk about how to create a search uh, very simply for specific needs. If you just want to look for dividend paying stocks, you want to focus on ETFs uh, or other things of that nature, focus maybe on high volume or focus maybe just on overvalued options. We'll talk about that as well, and then review some general tips and suggestions. Now, I want to let everyone know, of course, when you signed on to the webinar today, the GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar platform should have appeared on your screen. Inside that platform is a question pod, and I want to encourage you that any time during the presentation, go ahead and send in your questions as we go through the search tool or we go through various other options discussions as well. All right, all that being said, let me navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. And what we're looking at here is the basic setup of a trial account to Power Options. Uh, to start off with, we see that we have the main home tab on your trial where you can access things such as the free webinars, uh, coaching, learning center, and so forth. The portfolio tab we're not going to discuss today, but that's where we're going to track and manage our open positions, uh, the variety of signature tools, and then we start off with our basic strategy tabs. Right now I've selected covered call, naked put, bull put credit, married put, bear call credit, uh, iron condor, and collar spreads as well. But as I mentioned, we do support over 23 different strategies. If you don't see a strategy that you're interested in, say calendar spreads or something along those lines, we can simply click the other strategies tab the end of our tab navigation system, and we can remove 
and select to add any of the available strategies on the left-hand side. Now, before we go any further, I just want to have uh, two quick polls that I want to launch to gear the rest of the presentation. And we do have a couple questions that came in already. Uh, but what I want to know right off the bat is what kind of option strategies are you currently researching or trading right now? Are you mainly looking at covered calls or the parity trade, the naked put position? Are you looking at insured positions such as married puts or collar trades? Are you looking at buying options, buying calls, buying puts, speculating on a market movement? Are you looking at credit or debit spreads? Okay, bear call credit, bull put credit, an iron condor and so forth. Or are you looking at the calendar spreads, the time spreads, uh, you know, different horizontal or diagonal spreads as well? So we're going to leave this poll open for about a minute. Just let me know uh, what kind of strategies you're trading here, and that'll help us gear the rest of the presentation. Of course, I do have a follow-up poll to this. Um, regardless of the answer to the follow-up poll, I just want to see a gauge of what we're looking at. Okay, let's see here. So we did have a comment here. Okay, uh, John says, thinking about ITM or ATM naked calls today. John, do you mean just selling a call, uh, the naked call position, just selling a call without owning the stock or owning another call in the form of a spread? Is that what you're looking to uh, do today? I don't have that as one there. It's very, uh, you know, usually about, uh, I'm sorry, the Power Options users, only about 2 to 5% at any given time use the naked call strategy. But it's something, John, that we can look at if you want to as well. And we say naked call, of course, we mean selling a call uh, without owning the stock or without part of a bear call spread. If you're looking to buy a call, we just call that a, a long call as well. Okay. And then we had a question come in from Thomas. Could you review a covered call trade example? Yeah, we'll look at that, and I think we'll probably end up looking at that first. Let me go ahead and close uh, that poll, and then we'll go ahead and... Uh, share the results with everyone of what we have so far for that first poll. All right, we've got 50% of our attendees doing covered calls and naked puts. I could answer more than that. 45% of you are buying options. Okay, that's good. 41% are doing the credit spreads. I have 27% doing the insured position, and then a small portion, about 10%, doing the calendar spreads. All right, well, let me go ahead and hide that results, hide those results, excuse me. And I'm going to launch my second poll here. We're going to cover all of this as best we can, but I'm just curious to know what kind of, for those of you that, of course, selected your strategies, what kind of options expiration time frame are you looking for? Are you mainly doing weekly options, just looking at the five to seven day out one week only? Are you doing part of the continuous weekly series where we might be looking at the two day out, uh, sorry, two week out or three week out series uh, that are available, the continuous options? Are you looking at standard option expiration, the third Friday of a given month? Or are you looking at far out expiration, maybe buying calls or buying puts that are maybe three to four to five months out in time? Or, of course, some of you are following the uh, protective uh, trades as well. Okay. And John says he, he meant buying calls, no spreads. Good, good, yeah. When I say uh, naked calls, we're referring to as selling a call option without owning stock or owning another call as part of a spread, the naked call position. It's considered a very risky position doing the naked call, just selling a call without owning anything against it, because the upside potential loss is infinite if the stock moves up against you or there's a buyout that comes out or some other event. But of course, buying calls, we're going to cover that today a little bit as well. All right. Okay, so we'll cover John there. All right, so let me leave this poll open for another 5, 10 seconds. If you haven't uh, responded yet, uh, just let me, you know, encourage you to do so. And we'll get on with the presentation in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and close that down. And as before, we'll share the results with everyone. So it looks like 64% of you are kind of focusing on the standard expiration, you know, just looking to the third Friday out, probably rolling positions and adjusting positions. 45% of you are kind of using the weekly options, but you're doing that two-week out and three-week out series. That's kind of what I look for with some of my weekly trade spreads and naked puts as well. 41% uh, of you are focused just on maybe the one week out in time. Okay, so you might just be looking just for the seven days, and then 41% of you are looking at least two to three months out as well. Okay, well, let's go ahead and hide that, and let's go back first into our other strategies tab. Well, our top winner today, 50% of you doing covered calls and naked puts, and in second place, we had long options, and I don't have that as one of my screens, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. And I'll go ahead and add long call to our menu. So we'll just select it from the available menu, and I'm going to move that up as well. Just add long calls for now. We could add long puts also. And 41% of you are doing the spread. So I've got bull put credit and bear call credit. So we've got that customized now uh, in order. 
Uh, following that, we had 27% of you doing the protected option strategy, so we'll leave the married put there. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the iron, oh, I'll leave the iron condor now, it's a combination of a bull put and a bear call. Um, actually, no, I am going to remove the custom spreads for right now, we can always come back to that. And I'm going to go ahead and add our calendar calls for those investors that are doing the horizontal and diagonals as well. All right, let's go ahead and save our configuration. Now our tabs are adjusted based on the selections that we made. And we're going to start off with a covered call. Let me just take this question real quick. Okay, Rhonda asks a, a more open question. Is there a search tool that identifies strategies that take advantage of earnings expectations? Well, uh, most investors I talk to who trade earnings will probably trade a long strangle or a long straddle. We do have some search criteria set up as a default to use for those in earnings. And we also have um, some help articles in the long straddle and long strangle section about how we approach the earnings uh, search criteria in those strategies as well, looking for uh, long calls and long puts in the straddle or strangle combination going forward in time. I'll point you to those a little bit later in the presentation, Rhonda, so you can take a look as well. All right, now, first off, when you click on a strategy tab, uh, every strategy homepage is going to look very similar. So here in Covered Calls, you have a basic overview with a link to a more detailed strategy help page. You have a brief review of the available tools that are available for each given strategy. And then down below, you'll have a learning center. And of course, over to the right-hand side, what we're looking at here is just your basic profit and loss chart of a covered call position. Thomas had asked at the beginning of the presentation, could you review a covered call trade example? And that's what we're going to start off with today. Now, a covered call, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a stock, and of course, I'm going to sell a call against it. We're going to generate a premium. Our max return occurs if the stock is trading above our short call strike price we would get assigned and earn the maximum return. So if we sold a 50 strike call here, we bought stock, let's say, at 48, and we sold a 50 strike call, the stock's above 50, we get assigned and earn the max return. Of course, our downside is open. If the stock falls, has a sudden gap down in price, uh, we're still on the hook. We've covered some of that loss by the call premium we collected, um, but you can still suffer significant downside losses with the covered call trade as well. Of course, in any strategy, there's three different ways that you can approach it. You can be aggressive in the covered call strategy, you can be moderate, or you can be conservative. Well, let's talk about all three of those concepts. Whenever I want to look for new positions in a given strategy, let's we'll go into the main strategy tab, and we'll click on search. When you open the search tool, you'll see a list of trades. These are not direct recommendations or suggestions. These are the trade results that match our default criteria that are listed below. So when I scroll down below the list of trades, we're going to see the parameter field. Now for our covered calls right now, what we're looking at is a basic weekly covered call search. And some default criteria that we've set up for you to use, use a stepping stone to create your own personal search. Some of the other strategies that we've created, there's one that's looking at covered calls on stocks that have high broker recommendations and advisor recommended. There's an at the money search, which usually results in the highest time value and a reasonable max return if assigned and a reasonable downside protection. The in the money screen, this is to be more conservative to start off with, where you're selling calls below the current stock price. You still might have a small percent return if assigned but you have a higher downside protection. And then, of course, the out of the money is a speculation. You're generating some premium month by month, perhaps, or week by week. You're hoping not to be assigned, kind of using it to maybe enhance a dividend-like income for the out of the money screen, but you don't have a lot of downside protection. Now, let's talk about the functionality of the parameter field here in the basics. In the basic form, in every strategy, you're going to have four sections of options criteria, or criteria I should say, that you can adjust. The options criteria, where we can set in our parameters for time frame, implied volatility, return percentage, range in or out of the money. Below that, we have other fields for the price and strike price range, where I'd set maybe my option bid price. If we want to restrict a bid to ask spread, we want to look for op or options that have a lower bid to ask spread or lower percentage. For some of the spread positions and maybe even covered calls, we might be focused on the probability, theoretical probability above or below in a spread position or for a covered call. The Black-Scholes ratios, of course, these help us measure if the option is overvalued or undervalued. You can also use the implied volatility ratios to identify that as well. 
And then, of course, we have our liquidity fields, where we can set things such as the option volume today, open interest. If you want to look at current option volume by percentage, so we can look for options that have a high percentage volume compared to their 90-day average, and things such as a put call volume and open interest ratio as well. This basic field in the options selection is very similar to what you'll see in every strategy. In fact, some of the only differences we might see between the covered call we're looking at now and let's say a bear call credit spread would be the range of returns. So for a covered call, the three main returns we focus on are the percent if assigned. What is the max return if the stock is trading above our short call and we get assigned at expiration? The percent if unchanged, if the stock stays at the current price it is right now through our expiration, what is our return? And the downside protection. Downside protection is simply the option bid price divided by the stock price in a covered call. And this is just showing us how far essentially the stock could fall before we start technically losing money on the position as well. Now before I go any further, let's just go into bull put credit spreads or bear calls for example. I'll go to bear calls and I'm just going to pull up the search very quickly. We're going to go back to covered calls in just a moment. And as I scroll down below the list of trades for our bear calls, we see very similar criteria. Our options, we have our time frame, the implied volatility, the risk return is the same, but now we're focusing more on things such as the net credit, the maximum risk of the difference in the strike price is minus the net credit, and the max return. We don't see terms such as downside protection, percent return if assigned. So mainly, just in the options criteria, you'll just see subtle differences between the return calculations and some things when we're looking at two options as a spread, a calendar spread, or a credit spread, you'll see things such as the ratios for delta, Black-Scholes ratios instead of just a static Black-Scholes number, strike difference selection as well, things we won't see in a covered call or a naked put field. Let's go back to our search for covered calls and go back to the parameter field. The first thing any investor may adjust is the time frame. So we took that poll earlier and we saw that 64% of you are using the standard expiration. We started off with our default screen for weekly covered calls. Here we see that we're forcing the system to look all months to expiration and we're looking two to ten days out in time. If you're using a range of time frames, let's say weekly options, I just want to go zero to five days out in time, or in this case two to ten days out in time, or maybe you're looking ten to forty days out in time, it's always best to select all months or all options. Okay, this says selection here, all months, this means all expiration dates, including weeklies. The all weeklies just looks for weekly options. So the problem with that is that when you come up to a standard expiration, even if the standard expiration is only five days away, it's not flagged by the exchanges as a weekly option. Okay? So you could look for all weeklies, but in general you just want to look for all months when you're using a time frame. If you're looking at one of those standard expirations, you mainly just want to select that date. So if I selected April here, the search will now just look at those options for April expiration but I will have to take out my time frame because I want to make sure I go to that 23 days out in time. Okay, um, Randy asks, are you going to address finding married put RPMs? It seems like on your trades you're varying the default search parameters. If so, what are the common changes that yield the best RPMs? Randy, I'll address that in a little bit. The protective option strategies were our last ones. We're going to spend time in every strategy that we selected. We're going to go from covered calls to long options to spread positions and then they could put. So later on in the presentation, we'll adjust that briefly. Um, but there are other webinars that you can see using the search tools for radioactive positions as well. We'll show those later on. Okay, so back to our time frame selection here. You can select any standard month. And you just want to make sure that your days to expiration are clear because if I kept the two to ten days in here, we wouldn't see any of that available. Okay, the Aprils would be filtered out by our own selection. Now, for those of you that want to look for options that are maybe two to three months out in time, no problem. Any strategy that you're in, again, I'll go back to all months, and I'll just say, okay, now I want to look for positions that are at least 60 or maybe 100 days out in time to, let's say, 250. Uh, as Randy mentioned, if I'm doing a married put technique following the radioactive trades, when I select all months, my time frame is going to be 150 minimum to maybe 600 or 700 days out in time. Okay, so you can just use the time frame.
Okay, did that work? Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, Go to Meeting just sort of shifted over something to me and tried to find a different sound source, so the sound bowed out for about a couple moments there. I apologize for that. Let's get back to where we were. Okay, so we're going to go back to all months to two to ten days right now, starting our criteria. Okay, so moving on for the options, the implied volatility field. We had mentioned that you can use the IV over HV ratio, the implied volatility of the option over the historical volatility to see undervalued or overvalued options. A standard ratio of greater than one shows just options where the IV is greater than the historical volatility, meaning they might be slightly overvalued. And an IV HV ratio of less than one, something we might use in long hauls, would show us options that are undervalued. Again, we talked about the return field. The range in or out of the money, of course, if we want to look for options that are more in the money with a covered call screen or more out of the money, I could just set to look at least 2% or 3% out of the money or more. Or we could go in the money if we want to force more conservative covered call trades, looking for maybe at least 2% or 3% in the money or more. And we talked about using the bid-ask spread. Okay, so if I only want to narrow my field down to options that have a low bid-ask spread, maybe only 20 cents or 30 cents or so, we could put that into the field as well. And, of course, the probability assigned, we want to look for a higher probability for going in the money with our covered calls and so forth, we can set that as well. And it's always good to use some liquidity when you're entering into different positions. Okay, before we get into the actual criteria, let's move over to some of our other functionalities. The stock technicals and stock fundamentals screens will be exactly similar in every strategy. So the stock technicals, we can screen for things such as beta, uh, the percent of 52-week range, if you want to look for stocks in the lower percent range or the higher percent range, percentage stock volume, the average stock volume, this is an average of the last uh, 90 days or so, and it's measured in thousands. So this default search is looking for covered call opportunities that offer at least only 500,000 shares on average per day. The historical volatility for the stock, if you want to isolate that to a lower range or a higher range based on the strategy that you're looking for. Broker recommendation, that's based on the Zach scale, where one is a strong buy and two is a buy and three is a hold. If I'm looking for a neutral to bullish strategy, such as covered calls, naked puts, maybe even calendar spreads, I may use a broker recommendation of less than 2.6. Whereas if I'm looking for a bearish strategy, I might look for a broker recommendation of greater than three to see positions that are recommended as a sell or a strong sell as well. Uh, the relative strength, you want to look for stocks that are in the lower percentile, below 30 for the RSI, or maybe above 80, depending on what strategy you're doing, you can set that as well. The Bollinger Bands I'm going to talk about in a little bit. That's another way that you can use to isolate trends in the stock. And then, of course, we have a simple moving average field. For our weekly series, we're just looking for stocks that are trading above the 20-day moving average as a starting point. But if you wanted to customize that, to say look for stocks where the 20-day moving average is currently above the 50-day moving average, you can change that as well. Of course, there's other selections we can do here also. In addition to that, you can look for stocks where they've been crossed above the SMA 20 or SMA 50, and there's a MACD filter as well where we can look just for those stocks in any strategy where the MACD is crossed over the signal line or for a set period of days, or of course where the MACD is maybe below the signal line as well, to look for more bearish positions after a crossover. Your fundamentals, this is where we can set things such as stock price, uh, earnings per share growth, P-E ratio, uh, PEG ratio as well. If you wanted to look for stocks that have a dividend, you can put that in also. Uh, The market cap positions, price to book, price to sales. And most importantly, in any strategy, you can choose to view stocks that do have an earnings between now and expiration. Again, as Rhonda asked, that might be something I might use for the long straddle or the long strangle strategies. We can select a few stocks that have an earnings between now and two weeks from now, something I might use in a calendar spread position or maybe even a general married put search or a covered call screen. Um, But what I'd prefer to do in covered calls, naked puts, and my credit spread positions is I want to look for stocks that do not have an earnings date between now and expiration because I don't want to get stuck with a sudden surprise where I might see a 20 or 30% gap in the position as well. All right, and if you're using dividends, you can screen specifically for stocks that do or do not have an ex-dividend date between now and expiration. Now, why would I select that? One of the aspects we're going to look at in just a moment is if I ran a search looking for covered calls on a dividend-paying stock, 
and my goal is to sell slightly out of the money calls to enhance the dividend income and hope that that call expires worthless month by month or week by week and I just continue to generate extra income. What I may want to avoid is selling a call when I have an ex-dividend date approaching between now and expiration. The reason why if the stock moves right up to the strike price, it's sort of at the money now, even if I sold it out the money again, the stock moves up and is trading right at the money in my cover call, even if it's slightly out of the money, if the dividend's coming up, I may be assigned early. So if this is a stock I want to hold long term and I want to avoid assignment, I probably don't want to have an at the money or slightly in the money call open as we approach the ex-dividend date because I may get assigned early, especially if it's a large cash position and you don't want to deal with the tax ramifications as well. Now, all of that may seem slightly daunting, I understand. And of course, looking at all the different stock technical and fundamental criteria, you may be a little bit intimidated. Well, one of the ways that you can still create a great search without plugging through all the fundamental and technical criteria is we do offer a variety of lists for you. So in the list tab, I can choose to screen specifically against a sector or industry, or we can choose to exclude a sector or industry as well. So if I don't want to enter any positions in, say, healthcare or oil or anything of that nature, we can exclude a sector or industry. But in our lists field, we can choose to screen just against stocks without using the fundamental or technical criteria. I can tell the system that I only want to screen against stock in things such as the Dow 30 industrials the Investor's Business Daily 50 or Canslim. I can choose just to look at indexes and ETFs, or we can choose to look at just those stocks in the NASDAQ 100, uh, the S&P 100 or the S&P 5 stars, those stocks rated 5 star by rating by Standard & Poor's, and there's also some value line lists or volatility indexes. If you like to play the VIX or the VXX or some of those other indexes as well, uh, there's a list that's created. In addition to that, I can choose to exclude any list. If I want to exclude the Dow 30 industrials from my screen or the IBD 50 and so forth. In addition to that, you can create your own personal stock list. If you have a variety, let's say 10 to 15 stocks that you track on a regular basis and you look for new spreads or new naked puts on those, simply click the button here for create and modify lists. And this will take you to a field. You see I've created some lists during our webinars. But I can click on Create List here, and I'll just put in a list for my name, and then we can paste or type in the symbols. Once we create that list, it'll be available in all searches, so we can run a search in any strategy against our created list at any time. Okay? All right, so that's what the list function is. Now, all that being said, let's get down to the point. Let's discuss covered calls here, and let's create a basic search for covered calls, which satisfies those of you that are doing weekly options and those of you that are doing <clears throat> standard expiration. Now the first thing I want to do, if I'm going to create a search, as I mentioned we can use any of these searches as a default, but I'm going to start from scratch. We're going to go ahead and click clear these filters and empty everything out for our options criteria, stock technicals, stock fundamentals, and our lists section. And let's create from scratch just a very basic search for weekly options. Okay, we're going to look 7 to 10 days out in time, or that, that kind of time frame, 2 to 10 days out what we had before in the default. Now, what is the first thing I'm going to do? Number one, let's go back to options. Let me set my time frame. Now I'm going to do covered calls. I want to see the opportunities for some weekly options that are under 10 days out in time. So let's just put in our time frame of, let's say, 1 to 10 days out. That will show us options that expire this Friday, and it will include options that expire next Friday as well. Before I get into what I'm concerned about with my option criteria, now that I've set my time frame, let's talk about what we're doing here. With any covered call, we're buying a stock, remember, we're selling a call against it. We want to make sure that we're collecting a good premium. This is a neutral to bullish position. We saw in that basic risk reward profile that the stock and a covered call position or naked put, we do have a large downside, which is very risky. Okay, if the stock gaps down against us, we're still on the hook for that 20 cent you know, 20%, excuse me, 30%, or maybe higher decline, there's an unexpected event. Sure, our call premium may have hedged that by 1% or 2%, but we're still down about 24 23% from what we invested in the position. That's sort of the dark side of covered calls. But knowing that the covered call, just like a bull put credit spread, a naked put, a calendar call spread, either horizontal or diagonal, and even married puts, these are neutral to bullish strategies. So before I start setting in my option criteria, I'm going to look for positions 
that have good fundamentals and technicals. So what are the things that I'm going to do? First, as a covered call trader, I'd go into fundamentals. I've set my time frame short, but now I want to look at fundamentals. And what is one of the most important things? Well, I don't know your account size, but I know mine. And in general, if I'm opening a radioactive trade, a married put position, a long collar position, a covered call or cash secured naked put, my account size dictates that I'm typically only looking at stocks between about five and maybe eighty to eighty-five dollars per share. Okay? So we've got our time frame. Hey, I want to look for covered calls one to ten days out. I know I can only buy stocks between the five to eighty dollar range. So set your stock price range that you're looking for. This doesn't apply to spread positions or long calls, of course. We'll talk about those in just a moment. All right. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to set some of the other things I'd look for. There's nothing wrong if you're good at doing this, if you have a good eye and good stock selection and you can stomach some of the risks. But in general, trading covered calls on small cap stocks can come with a lot of headaches and a lot of pressure. As a result, I would tend typically to only do covered calls and naked puts on mid to large cap stocks. And if you're not sure what filter to use, just hover over a text link and it'll give you a pop-up window with some examples of what fields to put in. For mid cap here, I see that it's 2 billion to 15 billion. And since we're measuring this in millions, I want to put in a field of at least 2,000 or greater for market cap. Now notice as I enter these fields over on the right-hand side, we see that they're entering in for our different selections as well, but they're highlighted in red. This means we've changed some of our filters, but we have yet to submit our search. All right. What are some of the other things I might look for? Well, this is a neutral to bullish strategy. I want stocks that are neutral bullish, stable to neutral to bullish. So that means I want to look for stocks that not only maybe have good liquidity and maybe larger cap stocks for a little bit more security, but I also want, probably want to see positions that have shown good management, meaning they've shown good growth and they have a relative P.E. ratio. So the way we look at that is the earnings per share growth. Stocks showing positive earnings will probably show positive growth. So a basic default, I might start with earnings per share growth of at least 5% or more. In addition to that, I might want to keep my P.E. ratio kind of relative, maybe 0 to 50 or 0 to 70. Not really uh, something you should always do, but it's something to have in the back of their mind. In addition to that, I know that I want to avoid stocks that have an earnings state between now and expiration whenever I'm doing spreads, whenever I'm doing naked puts or covered calls, so I don't want to be on that hook for that potential large downside risk. Okay, now let's talk. Those are just the fundamentals. Is there anything very complex that we've entered into the search for a neutral or bullish position? No, we had to put in our price range because we are buying stock. We wanted to see a growth stock, something that's shown positive earnings and good management. We want to look at mid-cap stocks, and I want to avoid earnings. As far as the technicals go, I'm not going to worry about some of these advanced concepts right now, such as RSI, Bollinger Bands, even volatility. One thing I'm going to look at here, so I want to make sure my stock has a good liquidity. Again, this is measured in thousands, as we saw before, so I'm only going to look for stocks that average at least 750,000 shares per day over the last 90 days. In addition to that, some investors like to follow the trend, some don't. I'm one that does, so if I'm doing a neutral to bullish position, I'm going to make sure that I'm only looking for stocks that are trading above their 50-day moving average. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about MACD now. We'll talk about that in just a moment, and Bollinger Bands as well. Those basic six or seven criteria I just entered, again, was there anything complex? No. I want to see good volume. I want to see a stock in an uptrend from a neutral to bullish position. Has to be in my price range. I want mid-cap stocks or greater. I want to see good growth. And I want to avoid earnings. It's really all we've put in for stock selection. Now, let's go to our options criteria. We have all these fun little things that we can put in as far as implied volatility, the percent implied volatility range, IV over HV, when I'm starting with a basic search that I want to find positions that match my goals for my trading plan in a given strategy, I'm not going to start off looking at these. Okay? Now, if you're an investor who does only look for options that you consider to be overvalued by implied volatility or in the higher implied volatility range, we could use these filters to do that, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. But for a basic screen and covered calls, what am I really focused on? We've got our time frame, got my stock selections. Well, I want to make sure the return is worth my while. When looking for a weekly option, I, in general, am probably going to look for something that's maybe a downside protection of at least 0.5%. I want to make sure the premium I'm collecting against the underlying stock is at least 0.5% of the underlying stock price. My max percent, if assigned, 
look at it this way. For those of you that are doing standard expiration, if your goal on a covered call position is to make at least maybe 25 to 3% or more, well, if you look at the 3% return, you say, yeah, but if I scale that down to about four cycles a month, I know I'm probably only looking at maybe about 0.7 or 0.6% return if assigned for a weekly series. So let's go ahead and put that in as a starting point. 0.5% downside protection, 0.6% return if assigned because we're looking at weekly series. I'm not going to worry right now about the strikes in or out of the money, the delta or the probability. One thing I am going to concern myself with is just the basic option bid price. Again, I don't know your account, but I know my account. I know what my commissions are if I buy stock and sell a call. Okay? Or if I'm trading a credit spread, my commissions might be around $12.95 to open you know, up to five contracts of a credit spread and then maybe 50 to 80 cents more as I'm trading more positions, more contracts, I should say. Well, <clears throat> if my commissions for entering a covered call or let's say about $5.95 for the stock and maybe $5.95 for the call. We're talking about roughly there $12 worth of commissions. Okay? And if on average I find that based on my account size I'm only doing two or 300 shares of stock for each covered call, collar, or cash secured naked put position, I know that even though I'm trading weekly options that I'm going to pay $12 or so out of that. So in order to make it worth my while, I'm probably looking at something with a minimum option bid price of maybe at least 40 to 45 cents so the commissions don't hurt too much. We could look more than that. We just call it 50 cents and see if anything matches our criteria. And in addition to that, general rule here about liquidity is when I'm trading any option strategy, I want to make sure I have some good liquidity. One rule of thumb, so you don't know what to put in for the option volume or the open interest, a general rule of thumb that Ernie and I have is if you know off the top of your head or in general how many contracts you trade on a regular basis, uh, meaning that let's say in general for my covered calls I trade about 300 shares. What I'm going to want to do is look for a minimum option volume today, at least five times the number of contracts I'm trading, so I'll put an option volume today at least 15, and an open interest of at least 10 to 20 times the number. So I might use something along the lines of 30 contracts if I average about three contracts, 300 shares per trade, or maybe just go to 50 or 100. Everyone has their own preference, but it's here for you to put in. I have some investors I talk to during coaching sessions on a regular basis who their minimum requirement for option volume today is 250 to 500 contracts, and their minimum open interest is at least 5,000. And that's perfectly fine. This tool is designed to put in what you want to see specifically in a given strategy. Before I submit this search, let's review real quick. Did I put in anything that was overly advanced? We already reviewed a couple times the stock criteria we put in. Not a lot there that was advanced. We put in our requirements for return and downside protection, minimum requirement for option bid, and of course the option volume and some liquidity. Nothing too far out of left field there as far as things you might be concerned about it using delta or gamma or the various Greeks or implied volatility. It's just a basic search for what we'd consider a good covered call trade. But is it worth our while? Is this going to save us time with our options research and analysis? Absolutely. With that basic criteria of what we just did, we've narrowed the entire universe down to 44 potential covered calls trades. This is right now is looking at all, you know, roughly 4,200 stocks, indexes, or stocks and ETFs, I should say. We don't do covered calls on indexes because we can't buy the underlying. But in just that brief moment of putting in some basic criteria of what we want to see, we've narrowed down the entire universe to just 44 potential trades. And as you can see, there's a lot of results here uh, that are duplicates. We have a couple on First Solar. There's different strike prices available and different expirations for Herbalife. We have the eight day out and the two day out, different strikes uh, based on what return we're looking for. Uh, two for Valero, or three for Valero, I should say, on the first page, and a couple for US Steel as well. I could filter this down further. Now, I'm sorting my personal results here. We're sorting this search by the percent return if unchanged. So any of the filters that you can use for stocks or options, you can choose to sort your results by as well in the simple drop-down menu. But if I wanted to filter this further and just see those ones that gave me the best percent if unchanged on a given stock, and every strategy, you'll see this field here for one result per security. All right, so if I check that box and resubmit, it's now going to show me just one for Herbalife, one for First Solar, one for Valero, one for Amborella, and so forth. We've narrowed it down to 15 covered call potentials that match our basic criteria out of the entire universe of options. This is the 
illustration of the whole benefit of the Power Options patented search tool. We're just plugging in a few criteria, basic criteria even for a covered call search of what we'd want to see. Some neutral to bullish stock criteria, basic return and fundamentals we'd want to see for our options and our time frame. We have only 15 results that best suit our trading plan, if this were in fact our trading plan as well. Now, before we go and talk about other criteria, I wanted to mention to everyone, notice here that basic search criteria I created for that weekly series, looking for around a 0.5-0.6% downside protection minimum and a 0.5% return if assigned. The options positions we're looking at are all going to be relatively at the money. I didn't restrict it by range in or range out of the money for the covered call screen. The downside protection and percent if assigned helped me do that. Why aren't we seeing some of the deeper in the money covered calls? Well, number one, the deeper in the money covered calls probably wouldn't have our minimum requirement for percent of assigned. If I go deeper in the money, we get a higher downside protection, which would have been matched. We would have our 50 cent net premium, which we asked for. That would be there too. But we probably wouldn't have that higher percent of assigned. If I go deep in the money for extra protection on a weekly covered call, you might only be looking at a 0.2 or 0.3 percent of assigned, as most of the premium you receive up front is going to be intrinsic value. Here, the at-the-money options give us sort of this better risk-reward ratio where we still have a reasonable percent if assigned for a seven-day trade and at the same time have a reasonable downside protection. If I went out of the money, we'd have a higher percent if assigned but a lower probability of getting that return. And with our downside protection, of course, would be much lower with the out-of-the-money option as well. Now, I just wanted to mention that first because if you did want to trade in the money covered calls, we could set that differently. A question that came in is, why aren't you using things such as delta or implied volatility? Okay, I've done this before with uh, our, our uh, archive screen on creating a search for naked put positions. I'll show you where those are in just a moment for those of you doing naked puts. Um, but in general, when we create a search such as this type, we put in reasonable criteria of what we'd want to see for the stock to identify good fundamental and technical criteria. We look for stocks that have good volume, I'm sorry, options that have good liquidity and volume and reasonable percent return and downside protection, I'm already filtering, believe it or not, by implied volatility, delta, gamma, and theta without even screening for it. And what do I mean by that? Let's go into our choose columns field up at the top. And here what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho. And I'm also going to select the static implied volatility as well. Let's scroll down below here. And let's submit our changes to our columns. And you can do this in any strategy. You can customize the columns view as well as customizing your search as well. So now that I've added these columns, let's take a look. Deltas first. It looks like the highest delta I have is 0 0.62 for the Herbalife position. And the lowest delta appears to be 0.33. Okay, so that's a little bit further out than I'd like to see, but that's okay. But without even screening for delta, we've restricted our results to be between a range of about 0.30. That's pretty restrictive. There's only a difference between 0.33 to 0.62. What about implied volatility? It looks like my lowest here is 0.2015. Oh, no, there's a 0.1592. And, of course, my highest is on implied volatility here of, at Herbalife. So this one is probably a wider range. In general, what I might want to look at, this is kind of the starting point, around 0.25 or 0.26 for implied volatility for a good premium when you're selling calls for covered calls or naked puts. And you probably don't want to go higher than about 0.65 or 0.7. Because okay, those options that have the higher implied volatility are going to give you a better premium. But they have an increased implied volatility for a reason. Meaning there's some event coming up or market speculation. The stock could fluctuate wildly. That's not what we want to see if we're in a covered call or a naked put position that has that large downside risk. You can see the gamma range is pretty close as well, about 0 0.10 to about 0 0.31. And of course, our theta is in with a reasonable range as well. So if you use criteria to identify quality stocks and reasonable expectations for your return for downside protection and percent if assigned, you're already filtering by gamma, theta, vega, and in general, implied volatility as well without even using those screens. That being said, this tool gives you the flexibility that if you did have a requirement where you only wanted to see covered calls on options, use options that have a delta between 0.5 to 0.8, you could set that in the delta field as well. Or if you had a specific implied volatility range, you could put that in also. Now, 
how would I change this search? If I wanted to save it now, I just click the Save button, prompt me to put in a name and a description for our search, and now every time we come back in the Power Options field, our search criteria that we just created would be available for us on the search. We don't have to recreate it each time. Let me go ahead and resubmit our search screen here. Now, how would I take this basic weekly search and convert it to standard expiration? Well, no problem. Let's go ahead and take out our all months days to expiration, and we're going to change this to April. But now that I'm going 23 days out in time to standard expiration, I know that I'm going to be able to increase my expectations for return if assigned, downside protection, and option bid. Do my stock criteria change from trading a covered call for a weekly option or for a standard expiration or maybe if you've been trading covered calls three months out in time? Not really. You're going to look for the same exact criteria. And in fact, this basic criteria view that we just showed right here with our technicals we used and our fundamentals, this is essentially the same criteria I'd use when looking for a new standard collar position, a calendar call position, a bull put credit spread, or a naked put, because they're all neutral to bullish strategies, and I want to identify stocks that match my neutral to bullish expectations. Okay, so we've changed our time frame, but now for a standard expiration 20 days out, I'm going to look for a minimum percent if assigned of at least 2.5%. I'm going to want a downside protection now of at least maybe 4%. So you need a little bit more cushion by selling 20 to 25 days out in time. In addition to that, we can increase our option bid price now. Let's bump that up to about 75 or maybe 80 cents. Uh, one other thing I should mention that you might change is that when you're doing the weekly options, you might want to look for that shorter time frame for the simple moving average. You might want to look for stocks that are trading above the 20-day moving average as opposed to the 50. Um, but then we can uh, look here as well. If I'm going further out, I probably want to look for a stock price above the SMA 50. Uh, Remish asks, will this session be available to attendees individually? Well, this session is going to be available in our archives, Ramesh. You'll be able to access that at any time once it's posted, probably around 5 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon as well. Okay, so I've changed our criteria. We just changed our time frame. We increased our downside protection, percent if assigned, and our option bid price requirements. I could increase my volume as well, but let's go ahead and run that. All right, so again, even looking at standard April expiration, because we know using weekly options, there's only about 410 to 420 securities that offer weekly options. There's about 4,000, uh, 4,200 stocks and ETFs. Uh, that offer standard expiration at any time. But with our criteria, we still narrowed this down to a nice, manageable list of six potential covered call trades that match our criteria as well. Okay, Thomas says, um, uh, I'm new to Power Options. Could you outline a simple way to get started learning the system? Well, let me pause right here. I'm going to save this search right now. We're just going to call this standard covered calls. Standard expiration, covered calls, March 2-5-2015, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and save that search for right now. We're going to come back to it maybe in a moment. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to navigate for, for Thomas's question, for Ramesh's question. Let me go to the free webinar section. Thomas asks, is there a quick way to learn how to use the tools? Well, some more basic presentations you might be interested in, uh, Thomas. If you go to PowerUp.com, when you go to the Home tab and you click on free webinars, there's a variety of basic presentations here. How do you find new trades? Well, we're going to replace that presentation with this one today. But here's a basic introduction to Power Options that will help you get started. If you're interested in covered calls, here's a good position searching for covered calls. Uh, that'll be a good starting point for you as well. In the option strategy section, uh, for the question that came in earlier for Randy, Randy, this is the webinar you want to look at. By the way, this is a public page here. Uh, I just want to go to the chat window real quick. Okay, that page, powerup.com slash webinars.asp that I just sent to everyone in the chat window, this is a public page. You don't need to be logged in to access this at any time. Uh, however, when you go to the screen, you go to option strategies, Randy, my discussion on what I change for uh, the radioactive trading, right here in this presentation from February 25th, power options for radioactive traders. Okay, we discussed how to use the power option tools. First 25 to 30 minutes are just focused on setting up the search. The main things I change in the search are just my risk requirements for what I see, want to see in a married put and my stock price range. Okay, but we do discuss other ways that you can create searches based on what you're looking for. Uh, those of you doing naked puts, here's an uh, introduction to naked puts and managing your ones and then spread chains ones as well. 
So remember, that's Thomas, a great place for you to get started. We just go in, get that introduction to Power Options presentation under your belt. And the next one you might want to look for based on your other question is searching for covered calls. A little bit more in-depth presentation there than what we're doing today on covered calls because we're trying to bounce around a little bit, show the functionality of the search tool. This presentation is mainly just on covered calls, so you'll see very similar content of what we just showed in the past 20 minutes as well. Let's go back to covered calls and back to our search. Okay. So we talked about the general criteria. We talked about things for neutral to bullish strategies, customizing the time frame, and the basic technicals and fundamentals. I want to go to a stock chart very quickly, okay? And some of these questions came in a little bit more advanced, but I just want to do is so let me go to big charts. And I have big charts set up right now based on uh, some selections and customization. What I've selected here is a three-month chart. I've selected to look at the Bollinger Bands. And the Bollinger Bands here, this is the price envelope you're seeing, the upper and lower Bollinger Bands. I believe this is based on the 14-day Bollinger Bands. And, of course, 20, oh, I'm sorry, it's 20-day. And then we have the 20-day moving average in between. So I want to show you here, if a stock's trading up at the upper end of its Bollinger Band, that's a 100% range. And down at the bottom, it's zero. Okay? And, of course, 50% would be right here between the two as well. And then the width discussion, if you have a wide range, that's usually after an event, you see a wider range. And then when it consolidates, you get a tighter range. One of the other things I've selected here as well underneath is the MACD. So you have the MACD line, you have the signal line here. Uh, oh, sorry, the MACD line, the blue line, over the red line. And in general, in a covered call, what I want to look for is something that's opposite of this. I want to probably be looking for something where the uh, MACD is above the signal line, showing sort of an upwards trend. It's a lagging indicator, but showing an upwards trend. When I see a crossover like this that occurred right about here, or a little bit earlier, right about here, shows sort of a downtrend, doesn't it? It starts to show downtrend here, although it came back up, but it's showing down. This might not be the best position for a covered call, based on if you use MACD for part of your analysis as well. Okay, the reason why I wanted to show that is I mentioned that, okay, here in the MACD, I may want to look for stocks where the MACD is above the signal line, and for the Bollinger Bands, I may want to see stocks that are trading above the 20-day, which we can look at, we already showed that, but are maybe getting closer that are uh, near to the above the 60, within 60% or higher of the up and upper band, okay? So how would I set that in the technicals? Uh, this is for John. He asked about the, the technical indicators. So for the MACD, I'm going to select to see MACD has been crossed over the signal line for maybe at least one day, okay? So it's been moving up above the signal line for one day. I only want to see stocks that match that. In addition to that, I want to see stocks that are, you know, above the 20-day moving average. Let's change that. But are getting closer to that upper Bollinger Band. Usually you see that when stocks are moving up. It's not an indicator that might continue to move up, but it shows stocks that have been moving up. So let me make those two basic changes. Let me submit the search, see if we get anything. Okay, so we've got Herbalife, Wisdom Tree, Patterson Energy, lower price stocks, GoPro, and U.S. Steel. Let's take a look at the chart for Herbalife real quick. Okay, so there we see a breakout recently, and the stock has continued to move up after the breakout. There we see our Bollinger Band cross, I'm sorry, MACD cross down here at the bottom, and it's been moving up as well. I'm not saying this is the only way to trade. This is just one way to analyze it, and I needed to use the illustration to explain some of the values there for Bollinger Bands and MACD that was asked for. You know, on big charts, you can also set different things for price channel, showing events, of course, and you can use stochastics, Williams percent R, uh, a lot of selections based on how you might use to identify stock positions, so you can view that on the chart. And I always look at the stock chart before I enter a trade, even though I know these six covered call opportunities are the only ones that match my criteria for fundamentals and technicals, still want to make sure the chart is going in a good trend that I'd prefer for my covered call trade. All right. So that's what we wanted to talk about with covered calls. Let me quickly go to naked puts. And again, I'm going to gear everyone who's interested in naked puts trading to go back into that webinar section, go into the option strategy section of our webinars page, and take a look at the naked put positions and the managing the naked put trades. It'll go over this more in depth. I just wanted to illustrate something here. This is the basic screen, same criteria, similar criteria. I'd use the same criteria that we talked about before. You see here that our default criteria for one of our naked put screens is looking for an earnings per share growth greater than six, PE between zero and 70, avoiding earnings, looking for a good broker recommendation, you want to customize what you want to see as far as the underlying stock price goes. All the filters for fundamentals, technicals, lists are identical to what we've just gone through and will be identical through all strategies. Subtle difference here 
is just in the return field. Instead of in covered calls, where we saw the percent return if assigned, percent if unchanged, and downside protection, here on the naked put, where I'm selling an at or out of the money put, I collect a premium, and if the stock falls below it, I may be forced to buy shares of stock at the strike price. So we call that the naked yield, not the return if assigned. If the stock stays above our put strike price and our put expires, that's our naked yield. So that's a return we'd look for, maybe between 1 or greater than 2% for a standard expiration. We're looking still for about maybe a 0.5 or 0.4% naked yield for a weekly option. The percent to break even, this is similar to the downside protection in a covered call position. However, in this case, the percent to break even refers to how far can the stock fall before we hit the break even on the naked put. The break even on your naked put is simply the stock price, uh, I'm sorry, your strike price of the option that you sold minus the net credit. Okay, that's the only thing that's different. Let's take our next position, which would be long options. Long options are, actually, I'm going to skip long options. I'm going to come to them in one moment. I know John's interested in that. But I want to go to the credit spreads again first. We already looked at that briefly. But let's go into the search field. For those of you, 41% of you are doing spread positions. Very similar setup. We want to create a search based on our time frame, whether we want to use weekly, whether we want to use standard expiration, bear call or bull put. You can put in your implied volatility ranges if you use those, or the ratio of the sell to buy option, which is more common in a spread. Your minimum net credit between the option you're selling and the option you're buying, and now we talk about percent return. The maximum risk for a credit spread, similar to the downside protection, but not really. Maximum risk here is more closely to the maximum risk of a long call or married put, where you know up front what the monetary risk is. And for a spread position, the maximum risk is defined by the difference in the strike prices. So if I sold a 45 put and bought a 42 and a half and collected 50 cents, my max risk is going to be $2. The difference in the strike price is $2.50 minus my net credit. All right, so we can filter that to force it to be only five or two point spreads by restricting the maximum risk to say be less than $2.10. I'm not going to see a five point spread in this series with a risk of less than 210 because its risk is going to be closer to 450 or four dollars. Okay, an easier way to do that though is to use the strike difference field for your spread positions. So if you have a requirement, let's say you're doing bull put spreads, and you only want to see spreads that are less than a five point strike difference, whether they be one point, two point, three point, or two and a half, here in the strike difference field, I'll select the strike difference less than or equal to five points, or I could use 250. Or, if I only want to see five-point spreads, you could say equal to five, or just equal to one, whatever your preference is for your spread positions. Other things we talk about now that are different slightly in our spread positions, of course, are the delta ratios, the ratios of the Black-Scholes and the delta, because we have two options now. Probability, of course, was similar. In a naked put, I would look for a probability above, the theoretical probability the stock would be above my short put. For a bull put credit spread, same thing probability above. And for a bear call, I'm looking for the probability below. It was a theoretical probability the stock would stay below both strike price and my bear call, and we would go ahead and have that position expire worthless as well. But again, the technicals are all the same, fundamentals all the same, and the functionality of the list field is all the same as well in every strategy. All we're changing is subtle differences between return, maximum risk levels, minimum premium, minimum net credit, and so forth. Now, most different of all these strategies is probably the long call. All right, the calendar call is also a little bit intense because you have different things for selling and buying far term and near term. You could set your near term expiration date, your far term expiration date, your delta ratios, and so forth. So it's a little bit more complex. The long call looks subtly different than everything that we've seen today. And the reason why is because we still have our time frame. So those of you, again, we showed this earlier, maybe I'm looking three to four months out in time. I've got a field here to look for all expirations, but I'm forcing it to only show me expirations that are 90 to 160 days out in time. In our, what's missing here? Okay, so we've got our implied volatility field. We saw that in the other strategies. We saw our in the money, out of the money range in our other strategies, and where we could select our strike price, maximum bid price we pay for the option, or I should say ask price, bid ask spread, probability, delta, and so forth. Well, there's no return field here. Why is there no return? Well, because the long call and the married put and the long put and essentially the married call 
don't have a calculated return. Same with the long strangle or the long straddle. They don't have a calculated return because essentially if you're long call, a married put, the risk is infinite to the upside to start off with. So it's not a calculated return. I can tell the system, you know what, I know I only want to pay a risk $5.50. I don't want to buy any calls that are more than $5.50. So what becomes more important now in a long call position? Again, stock filters. I want to see a stock that's showing a more pronounced upside trend for a long call position. I only want to see stocks that are good buy or strong buy recommendation. I don't want bottom feeding stocks. Sometimes you can make a good profit if you look for a long call position on a stock that's fallen to the lower end of percent of 52 week range and you're expecting it to bounce back up. But in general, we don't want to go to the bottom feeding ranges. Stock price now becomes irrelevant, doesn't it? Same with the bear call spreads I should have mentioned, or bear calls or bull puts. The risk here is what we pay for the long call. It doesn't matter if it's a $500 stock or a $200 stock or a $2 stock. If we're under our ask price of $5 or $10, it's still probably within our ranges. So you can adjust the strike price, or I'm sorry, the stock price any way you want. Looking for larger growth stocks and good peg ratios as well as stocks that are, have a reasonable PE. But as we always explained, and we showed earlier, you can customize it any way you want to. We want to look for long calls, trying to find the ones that are at the upper end of their Bollinger Band or uh, near a large trending or large gaining MACD, for example, by 10 days or 15 days. You can set that any way that you want. Okay, let me see if there's anything here that's under 550 for us. Okay, good, good. We still got about 21 results here for our long call positions. Other things that may come into play. John, uh, you still let me just check something real quick here. I apologize, folks. Uh, da -da -da -da, I apologize. John's still here. Okay, John, excellent, excellent. Okay, so for the long call, this is a good starting point for you potentially because you're looking for calls that are right at or slightly in the money. Disney here at 105, it's right at the money. Might be able to go a little bit in the money for a higher price. The only reason we're not seeing the higher strikes in the money is because I put in that requirement for $5.50. Okay, and you see that the 105, just slightly in the money, is already at 475 for the July expiration. So the July 100 would probably be around $9 or $10 for that option contract. We filter that out by our price. Uh, Starbucks slightly in the money, 96.79 and 95. Estee Lauder, uh, 82 and a half to an $84 stock, essentially, okay? Now, one of the ways, John, that you can restrict it to look for in the money or at the money, you could just use the range, okay, for in the money and out of the money. So if I wanted to look for positions, long calls, for example, that are at or in the money, I may just look for a range in the money of, let's say, greater than zero. So this will show me just at the money and anything in the money, anything that's greater than 1%, 2%, 3% in the money or more. We also have delta use here. You know, this is one of the searches, long calls maybe, or uh, blah blah blah. I apologize, calendar spreads, where I use the delta. These two filters here go hand in hand, as well as the probability. We don't show the probability here. You you can see the probability above here, but these all go hand in hand. For example, if I'm looking at an at the money option, we know that we're roughly zero percent in the money and zero percent out of the money. By definition, an at-the-money option is going to have a delta of right about 0.5, and the probability is going to be right around 50. Probably doesn't equate directly to probability, um, but there are, there are subtle differences in our probability equation. It makes it a little better than just basing it off of the delta, for example. Okay. Now, if I went in the money, I want to see calls that were at least, let's say, 5% in the money. Well, that would dictate automatically that I'm probably looking for a delta range of around 0.65 to maybe 0.8 or more, or 0.65 or more. Okay, so I'd only see deltas in between these two or above, and my probability would probably go up to the 70% range or 75% range. And if I look for a delta of, let's say, greater than 0.9, we know we're probably going to be maybe 10 to 12% in the money. We're going to have a probability closer to about 90 to 95% the stock will remain above it. Now, one thing I do want to mention for those of you doing long calls, remember, the probability above is just a theoretical probability the stock would be above the call strike price in this case. Does that mean it's a profit? Not necessarily, right? And if I bought a $50 call and I paid $550 for it and the stock's trading right at $50, I've still hit the maximum loss for the position. If the stock's trading at $51, well, I get a dollar back, but I still got a $4.50 loss on my long call position. One of the neat filters that is available for other strategies we looked at, covered calls and such, and is available in the long call that might be useful is your percent to double. 
the percent to double shows you how far of a movement you'll theoretically need in the underlying stock price to have your option price double. So it's not a return per se, but it is showing you that, look, if I went to screen for positions, then maybe had a lower percent to double, that hopefully if the stock only moved 3 to 4 percent, my option price would double, well, I'd put in a percent to double of less than 3. Now, by the way, I'm going to submit this screen by adding that little percent to double field, but I'm almost pretty sure we're going to have no results when I submit this search. Okay, why did that happen? Remember, we were looking at at the money to slightly in the money calls that had a premium. Most of the ones we saw, Disney and, and Estee Lauder, all looking at options at around 4 or $5 on $100 stocks. Well, in order for that Disney 105 call, which is at 475, to double to go up to nine dollars, I'm probably going to need to see closer to a seven or eight percent gain in the stock price to have my call price double. Probably a little bit more than that as well. Let's try it. Let's go down to seven percent. Let's submit that, and there it is, Walt Disney. Uh, I don't have that selected as one of my columns there, but you see I needed that higher percent to double range. What I'm trying to get at here is if you want to look for, I've, I've had this come up before, a customer says, I'm going to look for options that are deep in the money, you know, have a delta closer to one, but only have a 1% to double. Well, if it was that easy to find those types of calls, we'd all be doing it, okay? If you're that deep in the money, you're going to need a much larger gain in the underlying stock prices so your option price double. Options that have a low percent to double, say 1%, 2%, or 3%, you're probably looking at one or two strikes out of the money. Lower cost for the long call, but lower probability that you'll have a profit long term unless the stock really takes off on the position. Okay? So remember, everything kind of goes hand in hand in all strategies. Going back to our, our covered call discussion, an investor might tell me that, look, I want the most protection possible. I want to look for covered calls that are at least 10% in the money offer at least a 10% downside protection, but I still want to see at least a 5% return for a two-week trade. Again, if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. If those positions are out there, this tool is probably the only one available that will uh, across the market to find it for you. Right? I could put those criteria in to see if there's anything out there that matches that. But in general, remember when we go in the money, we're going to lower our percent return down to maybe only a 0.5 or 1% range for a 30-day out trade with having an 8 or 9% downside protection. And if I go out of the money, well, I may only have a 1% downside protection, a potential 10% return if assigned, but only a 20 or 15% probability that I'll get assigned and earn that return as well. So just remember, everything goes hand in hand. I wouldn't want to say I want to be at least 10% in the money and see at least a 10% return if assigned on a covered call. I could enter that. But at the same time, I shouldn't be surprised if I get no results for a two-week out or three-week out trade. Okay? All right. Let's see here. One other thing I wanted to review here for the covered calls very quickly, and uh, we'll be looking at just a moment ago, long calls as well. But I'll do them both in covered calls. We are at 10 minutes after the hour. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up here with two quick uh, screens we're going to use. But if anyone has any questions, Go ahead and send those to us. Any questions you might have about criteria for another given strategy. Randy, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to go deep into the married put discussion today or, or just the RPM discussion today. I really recommend that you go into that uh, webinars page and take out the look at that full presentation I did in February on using the Power Options tools for radioactive trading. Okay, because your, your question was related to the common changes I use. The common changes I use in a married put, again, are just adjusting the risk to what is my personal threshold and adjusting the stock price as a starting point to what I can afford or what I typically look at in my account. What we saw here in that covered call screen, about 5 to $80 per share. Okay? I have no statistics that prove that that's better than what Ernie searches for or what Kurt searches for. We're kind of using similar screens. We're just adjusting it based on our price level and our risk level. All I can say is that that's what I need to look for. <laughs> I, I can't afford to do 250 to $300 stocks in my portfolio as a married put or a covered call, so I have to restrict the strike price range. And personally, if I'm using puts for projection as far as, um, excuse me, if I'm using puts for protection um, with a collar or a married put position, I don't want to take a risk of higher than 7 or 7.5%. Seven all right, uh, before I get into this cover call review, one more time for specific requirements, I'm going to address Jim's question. He's been patient here. Jim wanted to know, can you take a look, touch on the screening criteria for bear call credit spreads? Okay, well, first off, 
I would start off with one of the basic ones here, the weekly bear calls if you're doing weeklies or the initial values of bear call number one. The criteria that I'd use for a bear call or a bull put as far as the options go are going to be the same. Okay, what do I mean by that? Let me clear the settings. Let me just go over a basic screen for you. What are we knowing about a bear call, Jim? Well, I want to be a certain range out of the money. I want to have a good probability that I'm going to make a return, that the stock's going to stay, my two calls, excuse me, Jim, are going to stay out of the money. So I need to be out of the money, and I want to have a good probability. I have to make sure that the net credit I'm receiving covers my commissions, depending on how many contracts I'm trading. I want to make sure the return is worth my while. I want to see some liquid options. And again, anytime I'm selling, for things such as covered calls, bear call credits, bull put credits, naked puts, typically the short option of a calendar spread. I typically only want to be using weekly options or under 45 days out in time. So let's go with a weekly screen, Jim. I didn't know how you answered the expiration question, but let's go with weeklies. Again, I cleared everything out, starting from scratch, bear call spread. Put in my expiration time frame of 2 to 10 days. Minimum net credit, since I'm using a weekly, I can't expect to see 50 to 60 to 80 cents net credit all the time, so I'm going to have to look for a minimum of at least 15 cents to start with. The percent return for weekly spread, let's start with a default of just 2%. This is just a starting point. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. For out of the money, if I'm looking, typically what I've seen is that the good positions that offer the probability I want, Jim, if I'm looking 20 to 30 days out for a bear call or bull put spread, we're usually talking about greater than 2%, 1.5% to 2% out of the money as a starting point for weekly options. For standard expirations, I increase that up to about 4 or 5% out of the money. But I'm also going to use my probability. Regardless, I'm going to start off with a basic one of 70. In general, when doing credit spreads, I'm looking for at least 75% <coughs> probability. Personal preference, no statistics. Again, if it's better or for worse, but that's my personal preference again. Okay. All right, so there's the 70% probability. Option bid I don't worry about because I took care of that with my net credit. I'm not going to go into Delta, Black Shoals, strike difference. Okay, There's a lot of weekly options out there now that offer 50 cent strike differences. To be honest, they drive me nuts. Okay, What is the best one? My 31.50 to 32 spread or my 32 to 32.50 or my 30 to 31.50? Kind of hurts the brain after a while. In general, when I'm doing spread positions, my minimum requirement is at least two strikes. Okay, um, I, I know there's a lot of advantage, or some advantage to using just one-point spreads because you have a lower margin requirement, the lower risk amount with a one-point spread. And I'll show you why I like to use two-point spreads. So I'm going to use a strike difference that's greater than or equal to at least two. And again, let's keep that same liquidity, 10, uh, to, uh, 10 volume today, 100. Um, Jim, let me pause for a moment. Uh, John says, thanks. I have Disney stock with Mary Put. Thinking of other opportunities. I have to leave. Very nice presentation. All right, John, thank you very much. Remember, if you have questions about a position, maybe you're tracking your portfolio at any time, just give us a call. Schedule a coaching session, of course, or just send me an email to support at powerop.com. Okay, so that's just the option criteria for a weekly spread. By the way, these numbers here, 2% out of the money, 70% probability, strike difference, liquidity, minimum net credit, and time frame, exact same criteria I'd use for a bull put, because right now we're not talking about anything bearish or bullish, we're just talking about, hey, a spread position that generates a credit, what are some things you look for? All right, bear call spread. What do I want to look for here as far as positions that are bearish? Well, I may want to see stocks that now have a lower average stock volume, not essential, it's not something I'd really use. Now, RSI is another one that investors tend to use. Remember, some investors will look to say, well, if the RSI is at 80, that means the option is overbought, and if it's at 30 or below, that means the option is uh, stock is oversold and may start to come back up. So I might want to look for an RSI of maybe greater than 75 or so, seeing stocks that had peaked and pulling back. This can be a little tricky, though, because when you see stocks that have an RSI of 75, they might be near that oversold range or that overbought range. I should say the overbought range, but that also means they've been trending upwards continuously might not be the way we want to go. That's just one idea to use. Starting it off simple, I'm going to reverse what we did last time. This is a weekly series, so I'm going to look for stocks that are currently trading below their 20-day moving average. In addition to that, I'm going to use the Bollinger Bands, I'm sorry, the MACD, but in a reverse fashion. When we were looking at the bullish ones, we wanted to see a MACD where the stock was above the signal line. Here I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to see where it's under the signal line for at least one day, where you've had that reverse crossover on the MACD for a bearish position. And again, fundamentals here. Oh, I'm sorry. 
yeah, no, that's right. I'm sorry. Fundamentals here. I may want to look for lower market cap, but that's risky as well. So at the same time, what I'm going to do here is stock price ranges are relevant, not dividends. Regardless if it's bullish or bearish, I'm going to want to avoid stocks between now and expiration also. And let me just use that. I think it's more important to look for the downtrend here instead of play with a lot of fundamentals. We're using the MACD. We're using the stock to be below the SMA 20 or below the SMA 50 as well. Let's go ahead and submit that. Okay. So that's not too bad. We're looking for stocks that are currently in a downtrend. We wanted the good range out of the money and good probability. I had my strike price difference filter, of course, as well in there, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. Um, and not between now and expiration. And, of course, we were looking for ones. Now, you see some popular names in here. Amazon, Apple, Home Depot, Zillow, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Wow, down five points today. That's a pretty big hit. So is Zillow, actually. Uh, so there's good downtrends today that we're seeing. Now, let's take Amazon here. I'm looking at the 380 to 385. That is a five-point spread. Okay, good. Here's the one I wanted to look at, Apple. 128 to 130 spread. Is there a potential to look at the 129 to 130 or the 128 to 129? Sure. Now that you have this spread available, you could go to the search by symbol and compare other strike differences for Apple. But let me just go to the profit and loss chart real quick. I'm going to just explain something here. One of the reasons Jim, uh, Jim L, I should say, uh, Jim S had mentioned earlier, uh, we were talking about the married post. This is Jim L, the question about bear calls. But one of the reasons why I like using a two-point spread is because one of the five techniques I'll use to manage a spread position is if the stock moves up towards my short put or short call strike price, one of the management techniques that might be available is to buy to close the short call that's being threatened and then sell to open the next strike up. So with a 128 to 130 spread, if my short call gets threatened within the next day or two and it looks like it's time for me to manage, I might be able to buy back the 128, sell to open the 129, leave my 130 open, Okay, so now I do have a one-point spread as a management, but I still might be able to do this for a credit, and I still might be able to have a reasonable return with a little bit more uh, breathing room. Let's say the stock jumps up to 127.80 tomorrow, still have a little bit of better breathing room as well. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I personally prefer to do that with the two-point spreads. And you said you watched the management webinar. That's good. And also in that webinar, I believe uh, the hands-on look we did, uh, which we just did the bear call spreads and condors with the hands-on look and part of that uh, vertical spread series. I also discussed, um, um, oh, we discussed the difference between the dollar and two dollar and what to expect. And in general, when I'm doing my spreads, Jim, and you're familiar with this, but I'll just mention it to everyone else who's still online. When I do a spread position, I don't do it by, oh, I want to do a two-point spread because I only want to allocate $200. Well, I might do it that way, but what I do ahead of time is I've, I don't look at the strike difference as my requirement. I look at the money that I'm going to put into the position. Okay, so whether it's a one-point spread, a two-point spread, or a three-point spread, the vertical spread I open might only allocate $750 to $1,000 of my portfolio. Because I only allocate, uh, have a few spread positions, over five or six spread positions open. I only want to allocate 10 to 15% of my portfolio to spreads to be exposed. Long story short, though, let's say I allocate $1,000. Well, if it's a one-point spread, that means I can do 10 contracts. Um, if it's a two-point spread, I can do five contracts and so forth. Okay, So that's what I, I look for. If Either if I'm doing a one-point spread or a two-point spread or a five-point spread, I'm only allocating $1,000. That dictates the number of strikes I'll be able to use. Okay, so I when, on my bear calls, Jim, there, that is a difference of what I tend to look for. Okay, so in the bull puts, I talked about how I look at the fundamentals more. I want to see stocks that had a good earnings per share growth, a good PE, um, mid to large cap stocks. With my bear calls, I'm focusing a little bit more on the technicals. I want to see stock in a downtrend. I might use RSI. Uh, we could look for the Bollinger Bands, but in general, I may just look at the simple moving average and the MACD for what I want to see. And it's strange because these all seem like good quality stocks, and they are, but the trend let me go to the stock chart for Amazon real quick. The trend is matching what we would look for. Okay, we wanted a bearish position or stock that's had a run. This one had that large gap Amazon did, of course. You see that's when the Bollinger Bands gapped from that large sudden increase, and then it consolidated again. It's below its 20-day moving average. I will say honestly that uh, it's possible. Anything's possible. It's possible Amazon could rebound here and move back up slightly. And you know, here was the perfect time. That little crossover might have been a good time when the stock was still about 380 or so. Uh, where you might have looked to sell maybe the 385 and uh, 400 bear call there, and we'd be looking at a pretty good position right now. Now it's down in the 370 range also.
Okay, but those are some of the things that I look for when I'm doing a bear call, uh, either on index or ETFs. All right, well, um, I don't see any other questions that came in, so let me quickly navigate back over to covered calls. I just want to talk about a few things very briefly. This only applies to covered calls, married puts. Um, the first thing I'm going to show applies to every strategy, but regarding um, the other thing, the second thing I'm going to show, it only applies to covered calls, married puts, um, and collar positions. But first, we talked about setting up criteria. We also talked about using the list, where I don't have to put in maybe some of the stock criteria. I could choose things such as the IBD50 or the S&P 5 stars, where those companies have already done some research and looked for growth stocks and things of that nature. But some of you may have a requirement that you might only want to do covered calls, married puts, or credit spreads on ETFs. Now, the first thing I'd want to do, so I'm looking strictly for ETFs, is I'm going to take out some of my fundamentals. I'm not going to worry about market cap. That doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to take out the PE ratio and the earnings. We want to leave not between now and expiration. And technicals, I'm going to take out, oh, I'm going to leave the average stock volume and stock price in an uptrend, because ETFs can be in an uptrend as well. And then create a search for ETFs. I'll simply go to the include, and we'll select indexes and ETFs. Okay? And then what I may want to do is if I'm looking for a covered call on ETFs only, I'm going to want to remove maybe the inverse or what we call the leveraged ETFs. Okay, so there's a list here that's the inverse ETFs, the counter market ETFs. Well, if I'm doing a bullish strategy, I don't want to see something that's going to be bearish if I have a bullish sentiment, so I might want to reverse the inverse, and I might want to remove the leveraged ETFs as well. And the reason why I might want to remove that if I don't particularly like to trade the two times or three times bull and bear ETFs. But let me just go ahead and exclude the inverse for right now, and let's submit that search. Okay, so there's only one right now, and it's a three times. And that's because not so much of the stock and option criteria we're looking for. I'm sorry, not the option criteria. It's more the stock criteria because I still had that restriction in there for stock price. So let's take that out. Let's get that up to 250, let's say, 5 to 250. Uh, earnings is irrelevant at this point because they don't have earnings. I want to keep the average stock volume. All right, so let's submit that now with a less restrictive price range. Okay, still only the two times or three times ETFs. Why are we seeing so few results? Well, it's probably due to the fact we know it has the liquidity we want. We know there are some ETFs trading in an uptrend as well. But let's go ahead and restrict this a little bit because the ETFs, the good ETFs, or ones you might be looking for, SPY, DIA, IWM, tend to have a lower volatility, which means even going out to a standard expiration, we're going to have to lower our requirements a little bit more. So I'm going to look for a 1% if assigned and a 2% downside protection. And we see some things that came in here. Uh, QQQ is in there, for example. IWM is now in there as well. Okay, so that's ones that you could look for. Now, if I wanted to remove all the leveraged ones, we could go back and select that as well. So that's the easiest way to search for ETFs. Just select to look for indexes and ETFs from the drop-down menu. Remove either leveraged or inverse ETFs. You can also combine two lists, and that's what I did here, inverse and leveraged ETFs to avoid. I combined the inverse and leveraged ETFs in my account to remove that. Um, but that's what you want to do. Um, and remember, and if you just wanted to look for covered calls or credit spreads on things such as, let's say, just those five, SPY, DIA, IWM, uh, QQQ, and maybe one of the emerging markets or the oil ETF, for example, remember, just create your own stock list of those five securities, and you just have to select the screen against whatever list you create, and then just put in your basic cr uh, criteria for covered call return, you know, maybe a 2% yield and a 3% downside protection one month out in time. Uh, lastly, I wanted to show real quick, for those of you that are interested in doing covered calls, married puts, or collar spreads on dividend-paying stocks, just plug in your dividend yield of what you'd want to see. Usually, I start off with about 2%, okay, uh, for a minimum, maybe one5 to 2% dividend yield to help augment returns. But remember, what do we typically see with stocks that pay a, reason, a good dividend of 3%, 4%, maybe 2% or so? they're going to have volatility that's very similar to these ETFs, so you're going to have to lower your expectations for percent return if assigned and downside protection once you start looking for dividend-paying stocks around the 3 to 4% range as well. All right. So once again, everyone, I just wanted to remind you at any time, you can review our uh, various webinars. Today's webinar will be posted here probably around 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to replace the one that we have here, How Do You Find New Trades, because it's a review of our search tool. Similar presentation, just more updated um, 
as well today. And remember, those of you that are interested in the uh, spread positions, excuse me, uh, you've, uh, John L. mentioned he'd already looked at this, so we had the vertical spread, the hands-on look where we discussed the difference in strike prices, comparing parity trades, and then the five to six ways I manage a credit or debit spread is listed here. We talked about that briefly today uh, regarding um, why I use two-point spreads mostly on my positions, because one of my management techniques is to go between those as well. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon as we focused on using the search tool uh, for the different option strategies. Remember, in every strategy, we have default searches and theme searches under the sample searches tab that you can use as a stepping stone. But if you already have a list of, let's say, five to seven criteria for the stock or the option that you use to match your trading plan, hit clear filters. Enter in your option and your stock criteria, and you'll start off with a good point. Now, if I run a search based on my uh, criteria that I'm using, and I come up with, let's say, uh, 70 or 80 or 120 or 400 results, I'm not being restrictive enough. I want to increase some of my screens. The whole point of this, the whole power of this Power Options tool is to get you to narrow down your list and help you save time with your options research. What I mean by a manageable list is maybe less than 40 or less than 35 positions, and you saw how easy it was. We created that basic covered call from scratch, just put in some basic criteria. We did keep it simple. We just used things for a bullish criteria, good fundamentals, good technicals, and what we wanted to see as well with our option returns. And we had narrowed down the universe of options to about 25 total results, and then later 14 results as well. Always remember the best thing to do in creating a search from scratch is keep it simple. Write down the five to eight criteria, stock or option, that you think apply the most to your trading plan. Clear the filters. Start with those, whether it's option expiration time frame, basic return, basic net premium, some options liquidity, and then stocks trading in an uptrend and under $50 per share. That's enough to start with a basic search. Keep it simple. And once you start adding other criteria to manage your list, it's best to just put in one or two criteria at a time from that point and then submit the search. If I put in seven to eight criteria as my starting point and I have 85 results, and then I put in another 10 criteria, well, that's an exaggeration, let's say I put another four criteria, I added delta, range out of the money, um, uh, let's say percent stock volume as well, and then I also add in another uh, Bollinger Band filter, and I run the search and I have no results. Well, now I don't know which one really triggered the most uh, restriction there. So I've got to go back and look at all four of those. It's better just to go one at a time after you have a good base criteria to see how that affects the number of results in your trade as well. And hit the Submit button at that point after each one. I always feel that when screening for ETFs, remove the inverse or leveraged ETFs. Really the inverse. You know, If you're doing a bull put spread and you want to do it on ETFs, well, because you're bullish on the market, you're thinking SPY and, and those others are going to move up, you don't want to get an inverse ETF in there. I mean, that's not going to do any good. As the market goes up, those are going to go down. Your bull put credit is going to be threatened. So really, the inverse one is a good one to move. I haven't studied and traded the leverage ETFs, those two times and three times ETFs too often. Um, so I'm not very familiar with them. I tend to avoid them just because I haven't studied them and I haven't researched them. Probably good opportunities for profit, but just not something I do as well. All right. And lastly, okay, just remember everyone, of course, the Subscriptions, those of you that are currently on a trial, the 20-minute delayed subscription, which gives you access to all the tools and all 23 different strategies, is only $60 per month. If you wanted access to the historical tools for backtesting principles, um, that's an additional $40 per month. So it would be $100 per month for the 20-minute delay plus historical access. And, of course, we do offer the real-time service, which is a $100 per month. Every time I refresh the page or want to search, I'm getting the numbers and calculations at that very instant. Well, thank you again for joining me this afternoon. I hope you all got some useful information about how easy it is to use the search tool and the various functionalities that are available for you as well. If you think of a question later on, please feel free to send me an email at any time to support at powerop.com. Uh, we do have other regular webinars during the week, uh, typically every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to go ahead and host that open discussion, uh, open forum presentation. So not even planned material, we just handle all questions on the fly from our attendees. That's every Friday at 4.30. You can schedule or sign up, I should say, for a new upcoming live webinars directly from that webinars page that we sent the link to as well. And of course, remember, you can give us a call anytime during market hours. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. Take care. Have a fantastic trading week. I'll hopefully see you on Friday evening. Take care, everyone.